you really shouldn't buy this many video games. I'm your man out of Japan, Jay Contra, and you can see exclusive videos about Japanese retro video game collecting over at my Patreon. After unboxing all of the games that I sent myself from Japan, there's a few that kind of got lost amongst clumps of clothes and the other stuff that I was uh, shipping myself as I was moving out of Japan. So I thought I'd just kind of collect everything else. Uh, over there on the left is everything that came in the other boxes, and this is just sort of a... Uh, uh, we're just going to collectively go over everything and see what I actually got and if I can even remember the sources of some of this stuff. I remember Red Alert. I'm pretty sure I bought this at Sudugaya in Fukuoka. It looks very much like a sort of Contra clone, but that's fine by me, considering that there's really only, like, what, three real Contra games out there. It's all, I'm always glad to even have a knockoff. Uh, this is for the PC Engine Duo. I'm oh, sorry, the, well, the CD-ROM, but, I mean, who, is, is anybody playing um, PC Engine CD-ROMs on, like, the original system? I think most people are probably playing them on the Duo anyways. Here's Archetype 2. I bought this at a hard-off as I was... I, something I did before I left was I rented a car and I took like my oven, my microwave, and a couple of other things, like light fixtures to hard offs in the Kanagawa area. And while I was there, I hit some places and I was able to find some really cool PC engine games for super cheap. So like here's R-Type 2. I think this is like 10 bucks. Uh, we also got Super Star Soldier, which is again like $10. It's really looking for the shooters. And then, yeah, what's in here? Yeah, just got to make sure it actually, yep, still got, and the key with a lot of these is not every one of these games that are sold as complete will have the nice protective plastic for the Hue card, but it's always a good plus uh, when you can find it. So we got Superstar Soldier Vol Volume 30. I think that they really did, I guess they, Hudson numbered their games. Well, it wasn't just Hudson, because this, no, it's still Hudson, it was our type 2, so it's Volume 9. That then brings us to Alien Crash? Crush? I'm pretty... I, I don't know which one it is. But this is a Nagzat Soft developed game that... I, I love Nagzat Soft. I've thought about actually doing a complete set of their games. Although, I'm pretty sure Hyper Duel is like a $400 game, so I don't think I'm going to make that happen. But this, I think, of all of the PC Engine games that I bought as I was leaving Japan, I think this is the one that I was most looking forward to actually playing. Uh, then, oh yes, my Dreamcast copy of Ikaruga. Did I have to see? Oh yeah, no, I had the disc with this. Oh yes, and it also has the Obi, the Spine card. If you're not familiar... Most disc-based games in Japan are, I should say, CD and GD-ROM-based games. So PlayStation, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, they were all sold when they were new. They came with this little spine card here. Now, depending on the store, this actually isn't going to change the value of the game. I believe at Sudugaya, a game with its OB is the same price as one without its OB. But if you're at a retailer like uh, Mandarake... These obis, and especially for Ikaruga, because it's not a cheap game, this obi can make the like a five or ten dollar difference in the value of a game. And for the expensive ones, like say Hyper Duel, those obis can easily be fifty dollars or a hundred in like maybe even Sapphire's case. Ikaruga, I think this just recently was ported to the Switch, but I will. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. I have not been able to clear Ikaruga yet, and I own it for both the Dreamcast and the GameCube. That's how much I love it. But I just can't beat it. One of these days. One of these days I will clear it. Uh, then here we go. Oh, yeah. Kingdom Grand Prix. I bought this years ago. I've had fun with it. Uh, but this finally, I am bringing it to America to, to rest with all of my other Sega Saturn games. I... I was expecting more out of this, especially because um, as, a, as a rising slash aiding uh, scrolling shooter, I love Battle Garega. It's my favorite shooter ever. Kingdom Grand Prix is fine. It's not It's not a bad game. I, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'll, yeah, I bought it from friends. You can still see the label here. This is sold as. Uh, the, the case being an A-. minus. I don't even know what's wrong with the case. Looks, looks fine to me. Even after shipping it uh, via Surface. Looks in great shape. Um, although the disc is also apparently in, in A minus grade too. Oh yeah, here's Dodonpachi. I think I bought this on a hard off near Mount Fuji. Uh, that's the weird story behind it. I love the Donpachi series. Love Dodonpachi. Great games. Um, the, the like Daifukatsu for the 360. Um, those are very well, and I'm I think still uh, fairly affordable for the 360. Although a lot of the um, the shooters for the 360 are getting very expensive, especially the cave ones. Uh, here we've got oh yeah Bakuretsu Muteki Bangayo. 
Uh, this is oh, this is an amazing shooter. I actually have the uh, N64 version sitting around here somewhere. That one is very expensive. This is about fifty dollars. It can get sixty or seventy uh, if it's got the Obi with it. It's very fun. It's very silly. It's got sort of this anime bent to it, where it's kind of like almost like a parody of Evangelion, and then you've got the weird uh, clansman <laughs> that shows up on the game over screen. I think this came out in Europe for the Dreamcast. I don't know if it came out in America or not. But it's really great. The N64 version is plagued by slowdown, very low frame rates. The Dreamcast is really the version you want to get if you want the full experience. And then, oh yes, Moon for the original. This is the original PlayStation version. Oh, excuse me, hitting the camera there. The, the thing about this is that, yes, PlayStation games might suffer from disc rot. I'm sure it's fine. They ended up coming out with a Switch uh, localized version. This is... I don't know what the re-release is going to do to its price for a while back in like, I bought this in 2016 from Trader. This was really expensive. It was anywhere from 70 to 80 bucks. And actually I think it comes with a bunch of stickers. Yeah. You got to be careful is when you're buying the original version, it is supposed to come with these stickers. I don't know if I would ever use these or not. I don't know if the glue even still works, but it's cool and nice to have. This is a game that I think is legendary for how it was sort of deconstructing the RPG genre. Because I think you play as like a guy who is coming after the main hero of the RPG and like dealing with all the consequences of that. Uh, this is another uh, thing on my shame pile that even though I've had it for four years, I still haven't played it. But again, that's why I'm not going to be buying video games for like the next year and a half, if possible. Here is my trusty Super Famicom that I bought in the junk, I can tell, because... Uh, this is where the original sticker was. As good as those stickers usually are, I don't know if it's the dirt or the scuff or the age, but for some reason, this just ends up happening uh, to, to the stickers on the stuff that is in the junk section. Uh, I remember buying one in the junk section originally, and it had a sound issue. It was only perceptible to crazy people like myself, but it was just a little hissing in the background. This one, I think, has been working fine. I don't know if it's a one chip or not. I haven't opened it. Uh, something that you might be able to do is to go through the Super Famicoms in a junk section and see if they're one chips or not. But I think externally, at least, I've heard of people being able to like read serial numbers or something and being able to identify one chips that way. I'm not into that. I know they're better, they're better quality, but I think as long as you're using S-Video cables, you're still getting virtually the best uh, possible video quality out of these things. Uh, let's go to the back here. Uh, yes. Yeah, so these, oh yeah, I bought this at Gayo. Um, no, that can't be right. I didn't pay 14 bucks for this. I think I'm, I'm like 80% sure that I bought this at Gayo for like $5 because they were having their big, like, let's get rid of our DS and 3DS game sale. And it's Pokemon white. Like I noticed when I was in the UK, these were going for like, 40 or 50 bucks, like maybe even 60 bucks if you adjust for the pound. But if this is true, if I did actually buy this a book off for $14, like, come on, the Japanese versions. Although I think, yeah, actually, it wasn't until the 3DS era they were able to pick your language at the beginning of the game. I'm pretty sure Black and White, and even Black and White 2, you still have to play this in the Japanese, but you're going to save so much money when you're buying these. And especially for Heart Gold. So this is um, the original Heart Gold. It's got the nice shiny box to it. Is that a scratch? No, actually, that's the pagoda there. I thought it was like a weird scratch, but no, it's just the pagoda. Or it's like, what was it, the Rainbow Tower? I can't remember what it is in the game. This is the version that comes with the Poke Walker, and this, I think, is like $25 in Japan. I saw that in the UK, they were going for like 70 or 80 bucks. I was like, okay, they're good games, yes, but are they $80 good? Maybe, actually, because you can actually go through Johto and Kanto on these games. So you are getting a lot of game for your money there. Quickly going through my the loose Super Nintendo games that I bought. I remember buying, yeah, Rushing Beat and Final Fight Guy. I bought from Trader as I was leaving. I'm pretty sure I got um, Kirby Super Deluxe at a hard-off at some point. Also got, oh, Blazion. Or, so what was it? Bra Burezon. Blazon. Yeah, I bought this at Trader as I was leaving because I wanted to get some Super Nintendo scrolling shooters. Double Dragon and Contra. I bought these ages ago at like Mandarake, I think, for like 10 bucks a pop. Uh, we've got Rockman and Forte. It's like Rockman and Bass or Mega Man and Bass in the English version. What have we got? We've also got Hoshino Kirby 3 and Super Aleste. I think there's an Aleste collection coming out for the Switch either this year or next. Uh, very excited to see that. Uh, really want to get my hands on some of those really expensive um, Toho shooters. This is Toho, right? Yeah, Toho. Yeah, Compiled. 
Next we've, oh yeah, Battletoads in Japan. This is a retro game case. I picked this up uh, in America, actually. The, the case itself, the game I bought in Japan. I bought this from Mandarake for like, I think like 40 bucks. I saw this at Hardoffs for like 150 or 200 dollars. It's not terribly rare, but I think people do do seek it because it is seen as like the easier version of Battletoads. It's not actually that hard when you compare it to like the British or the American release. It's still really hard once you get to the later levels, though. And then we've got the first Pocky and Rocky. I bought this in Kyoto of all places, and I remember because I got a really good deal at a place called uh, Ojamakan, which is if you're in the Kansai area, it's a really good shop. It's got the best deals on cartridges that you'll ever see in Japan. Uh, and then, although Mandarake, I think, can compete with it, because I remember buying Sprig and Powered for, like, $30 back when Super Nintendo collecting was was in vogue. This is go easily is, like, $70, $80 now. I got a really good deal on it. And then Final Fight Tough. Yeah, that was, like, 90 bucks. I bought it because I love Final Fight, and I was kind of disappointed. Final Fight 1, 2, and Guy, I think, are a lot better than this game. It's okay, I I wish I bought it for cheaper because you know you play I played it through as all the characters and then I kind of got as much as I could out of that game. It's not something I think I really see myself going back to. Turtles in Time was super expensive at one point. Now it's like thirty or forty bucks. I think now that sort of collecting has moved past the Super Famicom. It's still a really great game though. And then we've got the Japanese release of Hagane, which is only forty or fifty dollars. When you compare it to the American copy, which is like two or three hundred dollars loose. By the Japanese version, there's no even, like, I think the beginning has text in it, like in the cinematic, but you don't need to know Japanese in order to play Hagane. Also, Hagane is incredibly difficult, and I'd have a hard time recommending it just because it is so hard to get into. And then you see a bunch of chords back there. This, I should just mention, the special thing about this is that this is the Famicom Mini release of the Super Famicom uh, gamepad. I know this because it has the... The Nintendo symbol here. This is uh, characteristic of the Super Nintendo. However, you can see from the, uh, the, the, fa the Super Famicom colored buttons here, this was the Super Famicom version. That's why I like to, this is actually what I use when I play Super Nintendo games. This is what I use just because I think it's a cool little piece of, uh, of 90s memorabilia. And then we've got Live Alive, a late release Super Famicom Squaresoft game. This thing got real expensive. I think it jumped up from like $10 when nobody wanted it to easily $50 or $60 today. And it's also in a retro game case. If you just search retro game cases, I, 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 I don't want to say the name is retrogamecases.com, but just Google retro game cases. You can find these really cheap. And that's this is what I use to protect uh, my, my Famicom, my GameCube, and even my Famicom games. And then rounding us off last, but by no means least, one of my favorite games, we have Akumajo Duracura, or it Super, no, it's Super Castlevania 4, or Castlevania 4, I can't remember what the English name is, but this got really expensive, I think in Japan, it's like 60 or 70 dollars if it's complete, this isn't in the best shape, although looking at it now, actually, it looks pretty good, I'm pretty sure I bought this from Trader, what I do like though, is I think this was originally priced, this was a special price at some Japanese game shop back in like the late 90s or the early 2000s, they wanted pro upwards of 8,000 yen, I want to say it's like 7,999 yen, that would have been like 80 dollars today, and although that was a, a new price for the game, but you can find this. I don't know what the eBay price for this is going to be, but man, is it so good. And especially if you can find it complete, it is so worth it um, to pick up a copy of Super Castlevania. So this is, yeah, that's it. After what feels like maybe six or seven videos, this is all of the stuff that I ended up shipping to myself from Japan. And I've had a lot of fun opening it and showing it with you guys. And over the next few months, I'm just going to be pumping out videos going over all of the stuff that I have both I hope to share with you and to give some more details about all this stuff as well as just so that I can remember all of this stuff. <laughs> don't don't buy it. Don't buy this many stuff. You, you This is more than a lifetime's worth of games and I'm going to have the real I said this in a previous video and I will restate it to cap everything off. You can get cheap games in Japan but think about what the actual cost is going to be in terms of both your time, the money it's going to cost to ship, as well as your life. I have been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra. Thanks for watching and mahalo.